Hey guys, it's Star the Flippin' Hippo. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos. Today's July 7th, Monday. That means it's time for What Sold on eBay. So as always, I'm going to give you guys a look behind the scenes at our Instagram photos. We do a daily photo every day of the packages that we send out. And then we'll take a look at the highlights of the week, our favorite flips, our most exciting sales, and items that I want to share with you guys so that you have some new bolos in your life. Bolo stands for be on the lookout for if you weren't familiar with that term. Let's start with the weekend sales. We had 25 packages go out today. 22 eBay sales and three on Poshmark. Pretty good weekend. It's about three sales shy of our historical 0.5% sell through rate, but you know, a lot of these items were higher dollar. Our, our average sale price continues to raise. So being three shy, we're gonna be okay with that because sales have been slow prior to this. Uh, this past week actually sales started to pick up. Um, used clothing sellers, you're gonna notice that between now and March, our sales are going to pick up. April and March is the best time for used clothing sellers. That's kind of like our Q4. And people are spending their Christmas money, their tax returns, all kinds of good stuff. So let's go ahead and look at Monday of last week. Last weekend, we only had 18 packages go out total, 13 eBay sales, four on Posh and one Amazon. That's, you know, that's 10 shy of a 0.5% sale through rate. That's like missing out on a whole day of sales. And then we had New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, so of course the post office was closed. And on Wednesday, we sent out 11 packages. 10 of those were eBay sales, one was Poshmark. That's not too great of a number for two days worth of sales, but New Year's Eve, people were out at their parties and their gatherings. Most people aren't shopping on New Year's Eve day. So we were pretty okay with the sales for that holiday and what we sent out on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, things started to pick up. 10 packages. That's just a smidgen over our 0.5% sell through rate. We had seven eBay sales and three on Poshmark. And then on Friday, we had 10 packages, all eBay sales. And again, that's just a smidge over our 0.5% sell through rate. Let's take a look at one of the plushes I sold this week. This is a Disney Store Lion King Nala Lioness. She is 20 inches long, so she's almost two feet. She's a pretty big plush. She's official Disney store. And with the official Disney stores, they all have a special imprint on their foot, which I'm gonna show you. There it is. You can look for that and you'll know they're their official Disney store plushes. This Nala was really nice. She was soft, she was clean, she was bright. Her collars were good. She looked really good for a used plush. So I listed her at 25 and I got my full asking price. She didn't have any hang tags or hard eyeballs or anything I was worried about in shipping. So I wrapped her in a piece of, piece of tissue paper and she shipped out in a poly first class. The next item I'm going to show you is not technically a plush, but he is one of our friends that we fostered until he found his new forever home. This is a handmade ceramic ET the extraterrestrial. I found him at a local flea market. Uh, there's about half a mile down the road. There's a shopping center. A couple times a year they close the parking lot down and people come in with their wares and their tents and their tables and sell their stuff. It's like a little mini pop-up flea market. I paid five dollars for this ET. He is not a licensed product. He is handmade. You can see the initials there and that it was made on Christmas 1982. So in the description, I just disclosed that, that he was handcrafted and he had some damage on his elbow, a little bit of a chip. But in spite of his damage and the fact that he was a handcrafted ET, I still priced him pretty high for what he is. He was on a 25% off sale over the weekend, so I got $28.12 for him, plus they paid shipping. Now, he did go priority and he is a breakable. We do get questions all the time asking us how we ship our breakables. So I want to talk about that just real quick. You can see here that he's hollowed out. He had holes. So what Keith did was plug those holes up basically with bubble wrap. He shoved enough bubble wrap inside of ET until it was fully full of bubble wrap in case he got dropped or jarred, he wouldn't shatter. 
um, that's a good tip for you guys if you have hollow ceramics or glassware. You always want to um, put bubble wrap down inside the glasses or inside any hollow things. He then wrapped them a couple times in bubble wrap, put them in a box where he was snug but not too tight, and filled in all the empty space with packing peanuts until when you closed the box and shook it, E.T. didn't move. I wanted to show you these jeans as an example of why I love men's jeans. I no longer source Levi's women's jeans, not even if they're only 99 cents. They just don't move. You're lucky to get 18 or 20 bucks and they sit forever. These Levi's men's jeans I picked up for 99 cents, sat in the store for like a week, and I got $22 for them. So men's jeans, you can always ask for a higher price. They tend to move quicker than women's. So I honestly myself do not touch Levi's for women anymore, not even for 99 cents, but I will still pick up men's jeans all day long, um, Levi's. You may still see Levi's women's in my store or our posh closet if you're digging around. They're still there. That's how long tail they are. Um, I've given up and they're still there. You see the 505? I especially pay attention to jeans that have those numbers on them when I source the men's. They tend to do a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I'm still trying to get rid of the women's. So. This is a fluke. I have no idea what happened here, but I'm excited. These are Lucky Brand women's jeans. Typically anymore, um, I'm lucky to get $20 for a pair of Lucky jeans. Haha, <laughs> pardon the fun. Lucky to get $20 for Lucky. All right. They have been just trashed. They've raced to the bottom. They aren't, they don't sell for anywhere near what they used to, but I still pick them up for 99 cents. If I can find Lucky Brand for 99 cents, I will source them all day long. Uh, they move pretty quick, even if I only get 20, 25 bucks for them. These sold for $26, and I'm thinking it's because of the style. Um, the size is kind of a smaller size, but this little Maggie, maybe someone really liked the little Maggie Lucky Brand and couldn't find them anywhere else. Maybe they liked the uh, flare legs on the jeans. But I got $26 for them, so um, here, I'll show you the legs. You see how they flare out there? They're kind of like a flare bell bottom. I think that just that style, they're low rise bell bottom type jeans. I think that's why they, they sold within a week as well. And they went for pretty high. So that was pretty phenomenal for Lucky Brand. And maybe the new photos I'm doing with the full length helped out a little bit. That's something new I'm trying, showing the full length of the jeans and all my photos. But sometimes there's certain styles that people just like. Here's another example of jeans that went for a lot more money than I expected. Um, these are Red Rivet, not a very good brand. I got them because they were 99 cents and because they were uh, unique. I do say that to you guys a lot. Sometimes brand doesn't matter if something is unique, has a different style or great graphics, anything like that. I will pick it up despite the brand, especially for 99 cents. These were a dark black with really nice white off contrast stitching. They are skinny jeans, low rise. That seems to be a style people enjoy and they just looked really nice. So I picked them up, listed them for, you know, a high number expected to take 18 or 20 best offer but they sold for 2256 so I was pretty excited about that Red Rivet is not a brand I would suggest picking up though. this LuLaRue woman's dress we found with Bill and Dave of Gnome and Frock you guys may have seen the haul video when they were here if not you can look it up later we sourced this at a Goodwill when we went sourcing with the guys Keith found this dress of all people it was 99 cents um, it sat in our store for maybe a couple of weeks before it sold. It sat around for a long time before I listed it, and I'm kind of mad at myself because it is a LuLaRoe. It is new with tags. We only paid 99 cents for it. You can see I listed it at 30 bucks. I did take a best offer of 26, but still, it sat around because it's a dress. I don't have a dress form, and I don't like my full-length mannequin. I think I've told that story before. If you're curious and you want to hear 
let me know in the comments and I'll tell the story again. But I don't mess with my full length mannequin at all. So this just kind of sat there while I avoided it and ignored it. And finally decided to just put it on a hanger and hang it in front of our white backdrop, get the best photos I could. And I listed it at 30, which was kind of high. And I accepted the $26, which I was completely happy to take. Um, but I'm still kicking myself in the butt because it sold so fast. We bought this back in November when the guys visited. It was only in the store for two weeks. So that tells you how long it sat around the house. This item has been around forever, ever, like forever, ever. It came from our local honeypot thrift. Most of you know that closed in July. I picked it up because it was 99 cents and because it was wool. I tell you guys all the time, wool, cashmere, satin, and linen. Ignore the brand. If it's wool, satin, cashmere, or linen, blend or 100% especially, and it's a couple bucks or less, pick it up. People love those fabrics. This was super cute. You see these accents here? They were like a faux leather, kind of like a hard plastic almost, but a faux leather, real crisp, all of those accents and, and the pockets and everything. And then the cream color of the blazer itself was the wool. It had a nice snap button front. Um, maybe it was the size. It is a size zero. It just sat around forever and just wouldn't move. I did end up taking a $29 vest offer on it. And uh, I was happy with that. You know, it's been around for a long time. It cost me about, just wanted it to move. This super awesome Western shirt we also found when we were out sourcing. Bill and Dave are good luck. We need to start taking them sourcing with us more often. If you guys are watching, <laughs> we've sold almost everything we sourced when we were with you guys and for really good high dollar amounts. This particular Western shirt is a pearl snap, but it is very unique. Keith paid 99 cents for it, by the way. It has that uh, mark on the back, and then the front has this flap that flaps over and snaps shut. It was just super cool and unique. How could you pass this up? You guys know that we pick up Pearl Snaps, any brand, all day long, and they flip for good money, and they flip fast. Unique ones like this go even quicker. This is Rock Mount Ranchwear. That is a good brand for Western shirts and Pearl Snaps if you guys are ever outsourcing for them. This was kind of a smaller men's size. Um, it may explain why it sat around for a while. This was sourced in November at the same time as the dress, but Keith had this up in the store right away. But we did take a $27 best offer for it, and we're happy with that. We paid 99 cents. So it was on a 25% off sale, and then it went back to 20%. So we just kind of took the 27 and we're happy with it and we would buy rock mount again if we found it especially for 99 cents right so there is a good western shirt below for you guys to look out for especially if they're more unique like that and see the custom fitted i think that makes it a little bit tighter and smaller and that is a small size so i'd still get it again i would get it again in a heartbeat guys this is a vintage fat farm two-piece denim suit. We paid full price for this, roughly $5 per piece, about $10 for the set. Many of you will remember seeing this in one of my haul videos. It sold within like three and a half-ish weeks of being listed. It's on Poshmark as well, or it was on Poshmark. Um, it sat forever before I listed it and this is another one I'm kicking myself in the butt for because I ignored it look at the size 42 waist by 32 inseam and a 3x men's top that is a great size it's vintage it's fat farm I was totally cool with paying 10 bucks for it I just put off listing it because I didn't know how to do the photos but you can see what I finally decided on there I did the pants on the shoulder so I dressed the male mannequin in the top put the pants over the shoulder and then I took individual photos of the top and the pants. And I had seen this done before, like on other people's listings with suits and stuff. And that was just what I finally decided to do. And I, like I said, it sold pretty quick. I ended up taking a best offer on this for 60. Um, 70 was shooting for the moon that was pricing it pretty high. I took 60. I was happy with that. I had a lot of low balls on it, both on eBay and Posh for like 45 and 50. 
Um, 60 was good. 70, like I said, was shooting for the moon. And then 60 minus 15%, give or take fees, leaves us with 51. Cost of goods was 10. 41, it went in a padded flat. Believe it or not, yes, I did give it, get it all into a padded flat. We made about $34, 32 maybe. My math is never good. You guys know that. We'll say $32 profit. So I'm happy with that. Just another one I'm kicking myself in the butt for ignoring and not listing sooner. But now I know if I have a two piece, what I'm gonna do for the photos and I won't have to ignore it or avoid it. I'll just slap those pants right on the shoulder there and get it listed and get our money and uh, make some profits. So if you guys see vintage fat farm, especially these two piece denim suits and these larger sizes, bolo, 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 pick it up all day long. We paid $10 for the whole suit. So I mean, it. You can pay up for it, especially these bigger sizes. Men that are big and tall have a hard time finding nicer clothes. And this was a nicer suit. And someone that wears a size have probably was willing to pay $60 for something like this. Um, just like plus sizes and women's, big sizes always do better and you can always ask for more money. This phone was the very last phone out of the auction that Keith purchased a couple months ago. He bought over a dozen phones for a very good price. After the first three or four were sold, we were clear and free and everything is profit. They were all broken in different disrepair or repair or whatever. We sold them all for parts or repair. Uh, this one went for 120. It was one of the nicer ones. Some looked like this and some were crushed and had smashed screens and at this point we are making pure profit on all the phones that are continuing to sell before i let you guys go i want to ask you to in the comments below if you want let me know how your sales are going did you guys have any amazing flips this week anything super exciting did you find anything great while you were outsourcing you guys know i love to hear from you i love to hear how you're doing so utilize that comment section i read everything i respond to everything I just really like interacting with you guys and hearing how you're doing. And then um, before I let you go, I just wanted to make a quick mention. We did open our Facebook group today. It is called The Hippo Hut. Imagine that. So it's going to be a Facebook group that is that is reseller based, obviously. It's going to be for resellers to talk about reselling, which includes thrifting, sourcing, pricing, comping, all those good things. But we're also going to focus on good customer service and how to write responses to your buyers and good best practices. And then also, everybody's favorite, scheduling, time management, and bullet journals. So everything that you guys have come to love about this channel will be the basis for the Facebook group. We'll be a reselling group, but unlike other reselling groups, I'm going to bring to the table the scheduling, the time management, the bullet journals, the customer service, all that stuff I do on my channel, as well as my plushy knowledge. So it's gonna be a little bit different from other reselling groups. So I do encourage you to join. I'm gonna put the link in the description box down below. You can just click on that and it will take you to the group. You do have to answer three questions and then wait for approval. So just answer your three questions and we'll get to you as soon as we can. I have like, seven mods total and they're approving people as fast as they can so that people aren't waiting around for a very long time to get in we're going as fast as we can we're letting people in um the mods from my youtube channel that you guys are all familiar with and then keith and i um those are the mods in case you were wondering but yeah we're getting to it as quick as we can so just answer your questions and then it'll put you in line to be approved and we're approving you as fast as we can um, so please be patient with us. Again, I'm going to put the link down in the description box. Just click that. It will take you right there and you can join the group and join the fun. I definitely encourage you to join no matter whether you're a full-time reseller or a hobby seller. There's going to be something there for everyone to take away and to learn from each other. We're going to have a good time there. As always, do me a favor and smash the like button before you go. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are at Flippin' Hippos. Until next time, you guys have a good night.